Bernada Sander here from MeetAdvisors.com and I'm joined with Jim Snedeker, founder and CEO of Stock Manufacturing Company. Thanks for having me. You Thank got you it. for coming first in. First try. <laughs> yes. I was nervous about it. Yeah. So first off, I want to ask you, you know, who are you and what is Stock? Sure. Uh, so again, I'm Jim Snedeker, uh, founder and CEO of Stock Manufacturing. Stock is a premium American-made men's clothing brand that is designed, developed, and manufactured entirely in the States, mostly here in our factory in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And we sell directly to our customers without any traditional retail middlemen involved. So it's high-end American-made garments at uh, affordable price points. And is this all done online? Yeah, so our, our main point of contact is through the website. We also do traveling pop-up shops mm -hmm. uh, around the country. We actually just did one in Russia as well. Wow. Yeah, randomly. Um, <laughs> and we're opening up uh, sort of a hybrid lounge slash storefront um, right down the street from here, like a mile down the street in okay. a couple weeks. Nice, nice. Yeah. And is your warehouse then over here in the West Loop as well? No, the West Loop's a little pricey for, for <laughs> uh, hosting a factory. Uh, our factory is in, it is actually on Lake Street, oh, okay. but it is in West Garfield Park. Nice. So nice. we're at about 1100 West right now. Okay. And our factory is at 4000 West. Wow, okay. Yeah. So what made you start this company? Why did you start it? Well, there's a variety of reasons. There's five of us that started the company. Okay. Um, Jason and I have kind of the sales, marketing, and retail backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And we were running a small online shopping site a few years back. And we were looking to get into making things. Like we wanted to actually make the things that we sold on our website. Um, we went, found a factory in Chicago that we could speak with and see if they'd be interested in, in making our stuff, although we had no really idea what we were doing. Um, <laughs> and there were two designers working out of that factory on their own small menswear brand. That's Mike and Tim who do all of our sourcing and design and creative direction. Um, the two of them had been working on the small brand. They were working out of the factory and they'd come up with the idea with Isle, who's the factory owner and our fifth partner, hey, why don't we make a vertically integrated brand? Why don't we handle the design, the development? Isle, you do the manufacturing and we'll cut out all these middlemen and all kind of the garbage that goes into creating a fashion brand and, and make something a little more focused. And, and uh, so that was the idea for stock. It's based, the name comes from the Chicago Union Stockyards, you know, mm. kind of the infrastructure of how Chicago was built uh, back in the 1800s and into the turn of the century. And we, Jason and I talked to them, we loved that idea. These guys had a great brand, but really didn't know how to sell or market. And Jason and I knew how to do that stuff, but didn't really know how to make clothing. <laughs> So we kicked around some ideas and I sort of floated the idea of, hey, why don't we go even a, a further step vertically integrated and cut out the middleman. Don't, let's not try to sell to boutiques or anything. Mm -hmm. Let's just build a company online on our own. Uh, and that's what we did. And that was about two and a half years ago. Pulled the brand together and launched in uh, February of 2013. Wow. So two years ago, yeah. And what kind of clothing do you man manufacture? Do you have a specific focus? Uh, yeah, so we're, we're, it's a men's like kind of upscale casual brand. Okay. So let's see, today I'm wearing one of our shirts. I had one of our jackets on too. Mm -hmm. This is, we don't make blazers. Um, and so it's button down shirts, chinos, uh, sweatshirts, t-shirts, mm -hmm. uh, jackets like pea coats and trench coats. Awesome. And, um, and then just kind of sort of innovative fashion-y type things. <laughs> fashion-y, I yeah, like that one. I, I, <laughs> So what are some of the challenges that you've seen growing the business? So since you started till now, what did you come across? Well, uh, it's really hard to build a clothing brand that's mostly sold online from the ground up with no capital invested. Mm. Um, we, we literally have built this company just on sales. Um, it's, wow. So we've, we've done kind of a, a, a side track is we kind of got into this side business of designing and developing uniforms for like cool restaurants or hotels or um, like Goose Island Brewery is a client, Soho House is a client, uh, RPM Steak, RPM Italian, Alinea, um, and all these things are co-branded with our labels. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically it's been a way where we get marketing and, and press behind what we're doing and our name associated with a really cool big brand uh, and also big checks. So <laughs> we'd get the money from that and use that money to fund our brand. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, so it's, it's 
we really basically took, okay, we have design, we have manufacturing in-house, how do we utilize that to our advantage? Because mm -hmm. none of us, you know, we're not business school background guys, none of us have a bunch of money from our parents or anything. So <laughs> we just kind of figured out how to uh, build something from scratch and just use the assets we had. There you go. Yeah. So moving away from uh, challenges and Wow. Oh, that was just one challenge. We have a lot. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have enough time for, for all that. Making things is also hard. Getting things made. And more on to accomplishments. Mm -hmm. So what do you feel is one of your greatest accomplishments thus far? You know, something like really cool that happened to you guys that you're really proud of? Well, I mean, it's kind of funny because it, we talk about this all the time where we're always, especially me, always worried about like what's next. Like mm -hmm. how do we we're never really happy with the things that happen. We're trying to like always get to the next thing. But sometimes when we take a step back and look at what we have done so far, it's like, oh, that's pretty cool or this is pretty impressive. Um, I think the fact that we now get approached by big like hotel chains and airlines and stuff because our name has gotten out there just to design and make their uniforms, even though it's not really our main business, um, it's a cool thing that people, that what we're doing is resonating. Um, you know, on top of that, we, we recently secured a lead investor in our first round of money, so uh, helping us grow and scale up. And that's cool that people who have earned their own money are willing to entrust it to us mm -hmm. to build a business. Um, so, so that also is, that was the first big accomplishment where like someone looked at us and was like, I believe in what these guys are doing, what they're doing is cool, so here's X amount of money. Yeah. Um, that, that felt pretty good. Wow. Yeah. So moving more away from the company, more on to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what drove you to become an entrepreneur? Did you always have it in your blood? Did you kind of fall into it? How, why, or what drove you? Sure, so I, yeah, I mean, it is certainly my blood. Um, I, my family has a business. It's pretty small. It, it was pretty big back, um, I mean, it started in 1902, wow. my family business. Their headquarters actually used to be like a block from here. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, but so my dad's never worked for anyone but his dad or himself. Mm -hmm. um, actually, of the five of us in the company, not a single one of our dads has ever had a corporate job. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Isle's dad started the factory. Mike's dad is a carpenter and construction guy. Tim's dad is a contractor. Jason's dad runs a ranch in Hawaii, which is so random. <laughs> and my dad has this business. So uh, it's certainly in my blood and in everybody's blood in the mm -hmm. company. Um, and beyond that, I think, I mean, when you start a company, it's a lot of uh, hubris, maybe. Like you sitting in a corporate job and you're just like, oh, this sucks, I could do something better. Like no one listens to me and you mm -hmm. know, I've got more to say. Um, but I really just had an idea, which was the original business we were doing and turned out to not, it was a good idea, we just didn't, weren't able to execute it as well as some other people that did. Um, but then you just catch the bug, you're like, man, it's cool wanting to do something and just doing it and seeing how it goes, whether it's good or bad. And like, it's cool having an idea and just executing on it instead of having to like go through multiple channels. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, a big part of why we like, all of us, and especially me, like entrepreneurism is like doing something and seeing it matters and not just like having it get filed away on a boss's desk. Yeah, I like that. So what's next for you guys? What's next? Uh, we got to sell a lot of clothing. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's yeah, that's what we're doing right now. Uh, we've got some really big projects we're working on. Um, the next thing we're launching in end of April, if everything gets made on time, which is always um, <laughs> cross your fingers. The next big project we're doing is with a really well-known graphic designer and mm -hmm. artist. He actually just did the cover of and all the lettering for all of the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. Wow! Um, so he's done like Harley Davidson and. Highlight, Miller High Life and ESPN. He's a, you know, does lettering and graphic design. He's designing, doing a bunch of designs for us and we're screen printing it into like the lining of a jacket and oh, pocketing cool. on pants. Mm -hmm. um, so that's coming out in about a month and wow. that's the next big thing. And then working on a few other things, there's a, a couple other big places opening in Chicago soon that will all be outfitted by stock as well. Wow. Um, so yeah, those are the things. And then just trying to, trying to close out the rest of this round. <laughs> Um, yeah, we just have a little bit of money left to get in the door and we're done with that and I don't have to think about it for another few months. Hey. Yeah, just building the business, figuring out how to acquire customers a lot faster because mm -hmm. we've grown steadily now and now we need to grow faster. Yeah. 
And so wrapping things up, what is that one piece of advice that you would give to our community of entrepreneurs? Oh, geez. One piece of advice I would give to the community. Or two, if you can't narrow it down, I'll allow it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's hard to come up with a piece of advice that you haven't heard a million other people say mm -hmm. in tech articles and, and uh, interviews. Um, I think that for us, you really, a piece of advice is like everything is so much harder than you expect it to be and takes so much longer. They're like, you better be certain that the people you're working with, you can stand being around and like you trust them to build the company with you. Mm -hmm. And that you really want to be doing this if you have a few months where paychecks aren't coming in. That's, that's the thing. If you're starting a business and you're not someone who's getting a million dollar check or a $500,000 check to, write the, to start the business, like you will have to make decisions like do we get paid or do we buy fabric or yeah. do whatever tech companies do. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that is one big thing like if you're doing it be prepared to do it and not get paid lucratively for it for a while. Yeah, makes sense. And where can people find out more about you? What's your website? Where yeah. can they get your product? Yeah, uh, so we're at www.stockmfg.co. And then our store is opening up at 2136 West Fulton, uh, like second week of April. Awesome. Yeah. So guys, please check out st stock, stock. <laughs> and check out meetadvisors.com for more videos and blogs. Thank you.